you for that wonderful introduction. I don't know that I deserve it, but I will very much appreciate it. Thank you so much. So distinguished guests, it is such a pleasure to be here with you this evening. Um, really a pleasure for me. Um, I am so thrilled to be able to work together with you on the U.S.-India relationship, which continues to astound me by its breadth and depth and deep, deep connections that we have between our two countries. I want to give a special thanks as well to FIDS and to the American Jewish Commu uh, Committee for hosting the event today. It's a great, great opportunity to talk. We've talked a lot about the U.S.-India relationship. I want to talk a little bit about the U.S.-India relationship bilaterally, but also a little bit more about multilateral and what we're doing together in the globe. So as Deputy Assistant Secretary for um, India, I've been really able to see firsthand the growth of this relationship and how it has expanded, as I said, not only in the bilateral realm, but also within the multilateral setting. And that includes the Indo-Pacific Quad that you heard about earlier, and also the Israel, India, UAE, and US grouping, fondly known as I2U2. And so I know my Israeli um, diplomatic friend mentioned it earlier and said he had some envy about Quad. I'm gonna spend a lot of time talking about I2U2 as well, so he doesn't need to feel envious. As both President Biden and Secretary Blinken have stated, our partnership with India is one of our most consequential global relationships. We work closely with India on our most vital priorities, increasing mutual prosperity, advancing democracy, addressing the climate crisis, and upholding a rules-based order that is grounded in international law. The breadth of our relationship truly covers the entire spectrum of our foreign policy priorities from defense ties, economic and trade relations, security cooperation, the Indo-Pacific Quad Partnership, from health to space to technology, and upholding democratic norms and principles. This is all underscored by our deep people-to-people -people ties, including a record number of Indian students who are currently pursuing higher education in the United States. During this year, we have seen continued engagement at the highest levels of our government, with Secretaries Blinken, Raimondo, Yellen, all traveling to India within the last few months alone. This demonstrates our shared commitment to expanding and deepening this partnership. As I noted, one of the growing areas of cooperation that I have had the privilege of seeing firsthand is really our cooperation with Japan and Australia in the Quad. We have seen great advancements in the Quad and its cooperation, as reflected in the 2022 Quad Leaders Summit in Tokyo last May, and most recently, the Quad Foreign Ministerial meeting that we held in New Delhi just last month. And I, um, we expect to see great things and continued progress out of the Quad Leaders Summit that will happen in Australia next month. The Quad is tackling some of the region's most pressing issues including responding to the COVID-19 pandemic, addressing climate change, providing humanitarian assistance and disaster relief, and working together to address the need for quality infrastructure financing and investment. Through the Quad, we together are demonstrating what democracies can deliver for their people, for the region, and the world when we work together. For example, the Quad Partnership on Humanitarian Assistance and Disaster Relief is improving our ability to jointly respond to humanitarian disasters. The Quad also recently announced the creation of the Indo-Pacific Partnership on Maritime Domain Awareness. This will help countries in the region increase their ability to address illicit maritime activities. That's to the benefit of all of our economies. Then there is our work with I2U2. I2U2 aims to harness the vibrancy and entrepreneurial spirit of our societies to tackle some of it, our greatest challenges, with a particular focus on investments and new initiatives in water, energy, transportation, space, health, and food security. These investments are seeking to modernize our infrastructure, help advance the decarbonization of our industries, and promote the development and deployment of emerging and green technologies. In so doing, we will expand our shared prosperity, improve the health of our citizens, and serve as a model 
for promoting regional partnerships that create employment opportunities for our workers. I'd like to take a moment to just highlight three projects that are now ongoing under the ITU2 umbrella. First, our four countries are working to improve food security. To that end, India will provide land and facilitate farmers' integration into a project that aims to develop a series of integrated food parks around India. These food parks will incorporate state-of-the-art, climate-smart technologies to reduce food waste and spoilage, conserve fresh water, and employ renewable energy sources. The UAE is looking to invest $2 billion to support these efforts, and US and Israeli private sectors are being invited to lend their expertise to the project. These investments will maximize crop yields and in turn help tackle food security in South Asia and the Middle East, and we're doing that together. We are also working together on clean energy. In furtherance of India's goal of achieving 500 gigawatts of installed non-fossil fuel capacity by 2030, the I2U2 group is working to advance a hybrid renewable energy project in India's Gujarat state, consisting of 300 megawatts of wind and solar capacity, complemented by a battery energy storage system. Third, in February, India became a partner in the Agriculture Innovation Mission for Climate, or as we like to call it, AIM for Climate. This joint initiative was launched by the US and the UAE to address climate change and global hunger by uniting participants to increase significantly their investments in and support for climate smart agriculture and food systems and innovations. Now, as many of you know, I cannot talk about the US-India relationship without talking about the strong people-to-people -people ties between the US and India. It is one of my favorite topics. These ties, I believe, remain the bedrock of our bilateral relationship. And we are working further to strengthen those ties. We are so proud that there are over 400 million Indian Americans in the United States of America. We are so proud that there are over 200,000 Indian students that have decided to come to the United States to pursue a college degree. As Secretary Blinken has said, international education is a foreign policy imperative. As many of you know, we have faced a huge backlog of visa demand as we reopened our embassies and consulates around the world following the peak of the pandemic. Last year, our embassy and consulates in India broke all-time records for the most student and exchange visitor visas issued in a year. We issued more than 125,000 student visas last year, and this year we are prepared to issue even more. We have dedicated significant resources to lowering appointment wait times in India, and we are seeing progress. All visa categories except first-time visitor visa applicants have interview wait times that are close to pre-pandemic levels or even lower in some cases. We're not resting on our laurels. We are actively working to keep bringing down those wait times. So in closing, I would just like to say, as you can see, our partnership with India is a strong and growing one. I really want to thank all of you for all the work that you do to advance and support this important global relationship. This friendship between our two democracies is a global force for good in the world, as is our partnerships in the Quad and I2U2. Thank you so much for letting me talk with you tonight.